Great. Our next storyteller comes from up in Virginia. Hetty and I have known each other for a long time as well. She has such uh, a wonderful energy about her. I think when anyone meets her, they want to be her friend. Let's welcome Hetty Barnes. Thank you very much. I know, excuse me, we'll do the dance. Thank you. A long time ago, way back up in the mountains of East Kentucky, I was a little girl. We heated our house in East Kentucky with the black coal from the earth all about us. And we had a very small, shallow fireplace that we burned the coal in. And it was flush, the hearth was flush with the floor. And the hearth was about a foot deep and two feet wide. Now, in my little girl's imaginative mind, it was the perfect size for my stage. And every time I got a new dress, if it was Easter, my birthday, Christmas, I would put it on and I would sing and dance until my brothers would come along and tease me to tears. And then I would stop. But I did love and do love to sing and dance. And to be sure, Biddy Malone loved to sing and dance. But when Biddy would sing, her voice would sound like a squeaky gate. And her great big dundering feet, she would trip over them. Which would light a fire inside of her because she also had a terribly fierce temper. <sighs> well, that would just get her brothers going. Her brothers would start teasing her. Shuffle and moan, shuffle and moan. That's the song of Biddy Malone. That one day, Biddy had had enough of their teasing. It was late in the afternoon, and she just couldn't take it anymore. She took a great big old bucket of milk and threw it on her brothers and stamped out of the house, stomped out of the yard, down through the gate, past the town, past the village, her strong, angry legs carried her all the way down to the river. And when she stopped and looked around at all the strangeness, well, it was that time of day, that soft time of day, between day and night, when the shadows pay tricks on you. But what she saw there, down by the river, it wasn't a shadow, nor was it a trick. It was itty bitty little small houses with little lights coming out of them. Oh my, and the music, the music that was coming from them, well, it just melted her bones. And it made her feet a little lighter, and she danced almost across the grass until she got there. But it's good to know that Biddy Malone, of course, was mortal tall. And the little houses were very small. But by the time she got there, she fit just inside that door and opened the door she did. And when she went into the room, it was filled with magic. All the people in the room were singing and dancing all together. The women were dressed in poppy petals and corn silk. And the men, oh my, they had the bluest eyes, blue as the sky, and long locks of hair that would throw around their face as they twirled the women about the room. It was awesome. It, was, it brought her such happiness. But as soon as the little folk, the fairy people, saw Biddy, one by one, they stopped their dancing. They stood back against the wall. The music went quiet. And there at the end of the hallway was the most beautiful boy Biddy had ever seen. Ooh, he had skin the color of acorns. He had a soft, gorgeous hair, cool as midnight. Around his shoulders he had a cloak of grouse feathers. A loveling he was, a beautiful boy. Biddy was stunned. And then he spoke to her. Ah, I've been waiting for you, Biddy Malone. 
She sort of stepped back. That startled her. Good. It's the three wishes you came for, isn't it? Three wishes? She, she didn't know what he was talking about. Ah, oh, it's the three wishes, Biddy Malone. And can you name your three wishes? I didn't come here for three wishes. But now that you mention it, <laughs> I do have a couple of yearnings. One, I'd like to sing as sweetly as a thrush. And two, I, I'd like to dance as lightly as a deer. Ah, the boy spoke, took her hand and said, and you shall do both? Well, all the fairy people started giggling and laughing and punching each other. He clapped for silence. He said, but Biddy, wishes they come in threes. And so? She said, well, I have a terrible temper. I have a terrible, terrible temper. It, it's just hot and fiery, and it does no one any good. I wish for a loving heart. <laughs> and he looked at her in those deep, deep eyes and said, and it will be yours. And he took her hand and said, but now, Biddy Malone, let us dance. And she did. She took his hand. The music started. And about the room they went. Oh, Biddy had never danced so well in her life. And the fairy people started singing. Biddy started singing. And her own voice blended with theirs like a silver thread. Oh, they danced and danced and sang and danced, to be sure. Biddy did not want it to ever end, but end it did. And suddenly, because the boy, the loveling, just stopped dancing. The fairy people stopped, the music stilled, and the boy looked to Biddy and said, Biddy, it's time for you to go. Oh, no, no, I just got here. Oh, no. <laughs> And he took her by the hand and walked her to the door, kissed her on the forehead, and out the door she went. And she turned to say goodbye, but the loveling was gone. The houses were gone. The whole fairy village had vanished. And Biddy knew this was the way of the fairy people, here one minute, gone the next. And so she turned to go home in the dark of the night and the shadows of the willow trees and the river running. And when she got to her home, a strange thing was going on there. There was a large black ribbon on her door, as if her family was in mourning. She looked inside the window, and everybody was there. She came in the door. Her mother screamed and fell out of her chair. Her brother's eyes bugged out. Her father turned as white as snow. And he said, Biddy, we thought you were dead. <laughs> she said, dead, Dada? I've just been gone about a half an hour. Her brothers chimed in. Oh, no, we thought you were dead. We had you wake and everything. <laughs> and they continued to eat. <laughs> her father looked at her again. Said, you'll be gone two months, girl. Two months? No, Dada, just a half an hour. Two months, girl. And where have you been for the two months? And who have you been with? Her mother looked at Biddy and looked at her again, and then grabbed her father and said, she's been with the fairy people. Well, a few days later, Biddy came clean with her mom and said, yes, indeed, she had been at the fairy village. But she didn't tell her mother anything about the loveling and the three wishes. But to be sure, and really, the three wishes weren't doing her any good anyway. She still sang like a squeaky gate and danced like her feet had bricks in them. But she kept trying. She kept trying every day. Every day she sang and danced harder and harder. For in her soul she heard the fairy music. And the fairy music sort of went to her feet and her voice and gave it a kind of knowing. And she kept practicing harder and harder and harder, and she got pretty good after a while. And as for her temper, well, she did get somewhat of a loving heart. Every now and then, she would get pretty fired up, and she'd have to go, loving heart, loving heart, loving heart. <laughs> well, her mother was a bit worried about her, 
She said, you've been with the fairy people and they got a hold on you. I don't like it at all. But it didn't stop Biddy. And truly, after a while, her mother kind of liked the new Biddy. She really was nicer. And it was a lot of fun to watch her sing and dance. Her father got quite proud of her. He says, oh yeah, that's my Biddy. When all the people in the village would love watching her perform. He says, oh yeah, that's my Biddy. A little late on the bloom inside, but she sings like a songbird now. <laughs> Dances like a deer, that's my Biddy. Biddy kept practicing. She practiced harder and harder and harder. And she did get very good. But she got so good that oh, before long, as she was a grown woman now, men were kind of checking her out. And they came calling on her. And they would say, well, won't you come a court and bid him alone? Won't you come a court and bid him alone? But she couldn't. For that deep space in her heart, she held the love of the loveling. She kept hearing that same magical music. Only she could hear it. And time passed. She would walk through the woods. The thrushes would even call to her, Bid him alone, all alone. Bid him alone, all alone. Aww. And the deer, the deer would say, Bid him alone, all alone. Bid him alone, all alone. After a while, she got tired of it. She got tired of all the longing and the loneliness. And so she announced to her family, the next gentleman that asks for my hand in marriage, I'm going to say yes. <gasps> well, don't you know, the next day, the school teacher in town comes a calling with a dozen red roses in one hand and a striped rainbow trout in the other hand wrapped in brown paper. <laughs> Won't you marry me, Biddy Malone, he asked. And she looked at him. Mm. And her mother said, say yes, Biddy. Her father said, say yes, Biddy. Her brother, say yes, say yes. But Biddy could not say yes. But that deep space she still held for the loveling, the beautiful boy. She saw his eyes. She looked again and he says, won't you marry me, Biddy Malone? And she tried to say yes, but her lips were tight as a drum. And then she heard music. She, she really did hear the music. It was way off in the distance, but it was the music of the fairy village. And so she pushed the school teacher aside, opened the door, ran out of the house, and ran hard. Hard she ran. So hard, those angry legs were carrying her again. She wasn't happy at all. By the time she got to the fairy village, she was full. All the last little bits of fiery temper she had in her were burning like a brush fire. And she got to the door and threw it open. And all the fairy people were there, waiting on her, looking with big smiles. And in the middle of them was the loveling, the beautiful boy. And he said, Biddy Malone. She said, don't, don't do that. It's fairy trickery and tomfoolery. You lied to me. He said, Biddy, Biddy, wait a minute. No, no, don't wait a minute. Those wishes, those wishes did me no good. Oh, yeah, I got to be a good singer and dancer, but it was all my hard work. He said, Biddy, hush just a moment. No hushing me. And that third wish, well, that third wish, I, I have a loving heart. But tell me, what good is a loving heart? If you can't have what you love the most in the whole world. And he looked at her and he took his finger to her mouth. He said, Pity, Pity, I never promised you, I grant you the three wishes. I simply asked you to name them and told them they would be yours. Something gained for nothing is worth just that. And she thought about that. Maybe he was right. Maybe, maybe the singing and dancing and all the hard work she'd done, maybe they were hers, and maybe they were worth more that way. He said, and Biddy, and he held out his hand, and Biddy, as for love, I've carried the image of you in my heart since the beginning of time, but I had to wait for you until you were ready. Yesterday, your heart told you to take a husband, but you couldn't do it because you carried your love for me. I knew it was time I could come back for you. 
Ooh, that was a lot of love talk. <laughs> and that empty space in her heart was filled with all his love talk now. And the last bit of anger she ever had in her life faded away. And she smiled at him. And he dropped to his knees and he said, Biddy, I'm yours. And she took his hands and he stood and he said, Welcome home, Biddy Malone. Now let's dance. And dance they did.